Hey guys, it's Jim. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you're having a great day wherever you may be and thanks for coming back. Now today I'm going to do something a little bit different and that is I'm going to talk about photos and edit a photo that I took with this thing. That's right. This is an iPhone, uh, specifically an iPhone 7 Plus. But I'm not biased to iPhone. I use one and have, but I hear great things about other mobile devices as well. So this is really about editing your mobile phone photos in a Luminar. I use Luminar for just about everything and uh, I also use my iPhone just about everywhere I go. And so I come home from a trip and I just returned from one in London and I have dozens and dozens of photos that I took on this handy little device. And that's partly because I just like it um, and it's also partly because sometimes I'm just too damn lazy to get the big stuff out of my bag and set up the tripod and do all that stuff when it's just a quick snap. Maybe it's a little tea shop on the corner or a little fish and chip stand or something and I just wanna go click so um, I, I want to talk a little bit about that and then walk through a photo. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so uh, the photo I'm going to edit is this one. And this is the original and this is the final. Now, that's massively different and it's saturated and it's colorful. And you know what? I don't really care because that's what I like. And more specifically, um, that's what I like on this photo. Because what I did is I took this photo, single exposure with my iPhone, and I wanted to bring up the colors and make it look kind of like a Thomas Kincaid painting because when I was standing there, uh, and by the way, this is Scotney Castle in Kent, England, it's a couple hours south of London. Um, and I was there with some friends that knew about it. I had no idea about it, but thank God they took me because it's awesome. But anyway, um, I, was, uh, I was there and I was taking photos and to me it really struck me as looking like a Thomas Kincaid painting. And so I wanted to make it look like that. Now, I took copious amounts of photos with my real camera, um, and I, I do that in air quotes on purpose, but I got out my Sony and the tripod, and I changed lenses, and I did a lot of different stuff. I just haven't had time to edit those. But this one, I had time to edit because I just emailed the photo to myself, I stuck it in Luminar, and I'm going to walk through that. So, let me close that. Now, I wanted to show you, this is the app I use, and this is point number one for me about mobile photography. And you can't do this on every iPhone, and frankly, on the Android platform, I have no idea, but whatever you own, I'm sure you already know the answer to this is, uh, this question, and that is, can you shoot in RAW, or will your camera support a RAW format? If the answer is yes, then absolutely do that. RAW format is just way better, right? So I've been taking uh, iPhone shots for years with my previous iPhones, none of which could shoot in RAW. And I would still come home with these JPEGs, and I'd mess with them, um, and generally what I did is I'd mess with them in Snapseed. Now if you don't have Snapseed, I highly recommend getting it. It's a great little app. I still use it even though I use Luminar when I um, have time to, to dump a photo in there and, and actually really edit it. But on the go, I might just take a quick snap in the street and play with it in Snapseed and put it like in Flickr or maybe on Instagram or something. Um, but I've been literally, I've taken, you know, 1,500 iPhone photos that I have in my uh, Flickr account um, over the years. However, it wasn't until I got this lovely device, which is the iPhone 7 Plus, that it was capable of uh, taking raw uh, photos. And so the first thing I did is I went out and got this app. And this app is called Pro Camera. And I, I don't have anything to do with this company. I just love the app. It's amazing. It's fabulous. It's really cool. It's really powerful. You do have to buy it, and I don't know how much it was, but I don't know, maybe five bucks or something. It's in the App Store. I don't know if it's Apple only, um, but if it is, I'm sure there's equivalent an equivalent for Android. But bottom line, it gives you the ability to uh, you know, adjust exposure compensation and all kinds of cool stuff. But it shoots a DNG or digital negative RAW file, which um, I have now taken this DNG file. You can see it right there. There's the name. I'm in Luminar with that file. DNG is the digital negative. So I'm going to hide that layers panel because I don't need it anymore. I just wanted to show you that it is a digital negative or a raw file. And that's the format that my iPhone will capture with that app. So um, what I've done now is I got the photo in here and I got to look at my notes to see what all I do. But for me, editing mobile images, uh, there's a couple of things. And truthfully, it's fairly similar to editing other single exposures. Now I do a lot of HDR work, but interestingly, I don't find myself doing HDR as much on the iPhone as I do with my regular camera. Um, you can actually shoot HDR using the Vivid HDR app, which is actually included in that Pro Camera app. And there's other HDR 
uh, apps as well on the phone. You probably know this, but anyway, I pretty much just shoot single exposures. For So for me, when I get a photo uh, from my iPhone, a RAW file into Luminar, it's really about uh, a couple of things. The first one is I kind of want to manage the light uh, because it's a tiny little sensor, right? I mean, the phone is this big, right? So the, um, there's the camera lens or there's two in this one, but bottom line is tiny little lens, tiny little sensor, and um, it's, uh, it's not gonna you know, have a huge dynamic range, but I'll admit I'm pretty satisfied most of the time as long as I'm not shooting in low light. In low light, it starts to become messy and I don't think it's that great, but that has to do with the sensor size. You can't do anything about that if you're gonna have it in a phone. Um, so anyway, um, it's about, for me, managing the light and then secondarily, because of the sensor size, it's also about managing the noise. But other than that, it's pretty much editing the way I normally edit. So I'd come in here and I'm gonna add Accent AI and I think I went to about 72. Um, saturation, I took a little bit left and bumped up the vibrance um, a bit, something like that. Uh, now, that's, that's a decent start to the photo. It's starting to come to life, if you will, but uh, tone and, and all that, uh, the rest of these things, are really where I start to get that pop and sort of create that painterly look. So I'm gonna bump up the contrast, let's say about there. Smart tone, I'm gonna go left because I'm wanting to pull down some of the highlights, which is also the next thing I'm gonna do. So that's coming down pretty significantly, say about like that. Uh, shadows, I'm gonna bump those up a little bit. So let's say there. And then I'm also gonna pull the whites down because I wanna get um, a little bit more control over the, uh, the brightness of the sky. So let me show you what the tone filter alone did. And if you're not using tone, I highly recommend it. There's the before tone filter and there's after. So for me, what tone has done is balanced the light, added a little bit of contrast, and just made it um, a little bit more evenly distributed, kind of like what I would consider like a base HDR uh, blended exposure where the, the light's a bit more balanced. And that's kind of what I consider my starting point. Some of that is also due to the Accent AI filter. Uh, now, I just want to start bumping up colors and things. So I'm going to go over here to Brilliance and Warmth. I'm going to add a little bit there. Um, color balance, I'm just going to mess with the midtones, and I'm only going to do the cyan and red. And all I'm going to do is drag it a little bit to the right. Um, and that's because I'm going to bring up some of the reds, and it gives a little bit of pop to these dry grasses over here. It gives a little bit of pop to the building and the grasses there, but it also gives a little bit of lift to the color in the sky, I think. So uh, that was kind of pretty much mostly blue before, and now it's got a little bit of a red tint. And that was just, I, I use mid-tones on the color balance filter because there's a lot of mid-tones in this image. And um, I just wanted to go away from the cyan and more to the red, just to give it a little bit of that, just because it's kind of a late afternoon look and I wanted to accentuate that. So there we are, I think we're getting there. Now with adjustable gradient, I'm gonna take the top exposure and I'm gonna bring it down a little bit, something like that. I'm gonna bump up the contrast, which I think makes a big difference in the photo. Uh, just changing the contrast there it really makes the colors pop and then I'm gonna go a little bit to the left here just to give it a little bit more blue in the sky a little bit that's gonna counteract what I did with color balance but not entirely and now with a bottom I'm gonna bump up the exposure there because I want to kind of brighten the pond and again kind of evening out the light again but also adding a little contrast so something about like that and uh, decreasing the warmth or uh, the temperature basically of the bottom of the frame. So something about like that. And so what I'm getting now is I'm getting better blues in the water and in the sky, which to me is a great color contrast compared to the stuff in the middle, which is kind of the oranges and greens and reds. And so um, I think there's a nice balance there. Let me show you the before and after. There's before. To me, the photo had a little bit more of a yellow tint overall. And now it's, it's more definitive in terms of being blue in the sky with the blue reflected in the water and then the nice pop of color in the center. Uh, clarity is just something I just want to add just to give it a little bit more depth. And I think that's a great filter to use on mobile, uh, actually really in any photo, but uh, specifically my mobile phone shots that I edit in Luminar because I went from that to that. So it gives it a little bit more definition, a little bit more pop, and I like that look. Um, and then really all that's left is denoise. Um, and I see some color noise and you keep in mind, tiny sensor, it's, it's a phone and a computer. 
um, and it happens to have a camera attached to it. So you can't have everything, right? And so I don't expect super high quality, high definition images out of it, but I'm really happy with the results. Um, so I see some splotchy colors in the uh, uh, in the water. So I'm just gonna bump up the noise for both, uh, the, the denoise, I should say, for both luminosity and color. And then I'm also gonna boost it a bit. And then all I wanna do is brush that into the, uh, the sky and the water, or I could just say erase and just erase it from like the stuff in the center, right? So I'll just do that instead. It's just uh, it's the same thing, just in reverse. You can kind of do it either way. It doesn't matter to Luminar, and I'm going kind of quickly here. But basically, basically, all I'm doing is when I apply denoise, um, before I selected the, the brush, it applies it across the entire image like it does with any filter. But I just employed the brush to do a, a filter mask. And instead of painting it in where I want it to go, I'm just erasing it from where I don't want it to go. And so you can click on that button to check on your mask. And, and as always the case, I miss some spots. But again, you know, we're all friends here. So I'm just kind of playing around. And that's it. I hit done. And let me show you. Um, there's the before and there's the after. So a split screen before and after, if I could get a hold of that. You can see that we went from a overexposed sky, lacking in clarity and pop and color, and now a much more intense photo. It's to my liking. Hey, I need to close that. Um, it's to my liking. It may not be to yours. It's highly saturated. Okay, hello, I said close. Um, but you know, for me, it, it fits with what I wanted to do. And truthfully, I'll often push the envelope more in my mobile images than I will in my, okay, I get it. I need to turn that thing off. Um, uh, than I will in my regular images just because um, I can. I mean, you can do it anytime, but specifically with mobile images, I tend to be a little bit more edgy and really grunge it up or make the colors pop or whatever because it's already just to me a fun photo and less of a serious photo, but um, that's why I do that. So that's it, my friends. I just wanted to do a little edit of a mobile uh, photo, in this case, iPhone, but again, Android doesn't matter. Luminar is super capable. It has so much you can do with it, and uh, it's just a matter of controlling the light, making the colors pop, or you know, if you want black, black and white, do that, and then just sort of managing the things that the sensors uh, can accommodate. So they create noise, they don't quite have the right definition, they don't really accurately capture the colors, but you can fix all that in Luminar and quickly, I might add. So that's it for this. I hope it was helpful, and don't forget to shoot raw. Try that app if you want. It doesn't do anything for me. I don't get anything out of it. Um, I'm, you know, I'm just, uh, just a fan of the app. So check it out. And that's it, my friends. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it very much. Hit subscribe if you haven't yet. And uh, tune back in. I got more stuff coming, uh, more Luminar stuff, more Aurora HDR stuff. And we're going to keep having fun. So thanks again, friends. I'll see you next time. And adios.